often evolutionists will say that evolution has nothing to do with abiogenesis, which is um, the idea that life just started out of some kind of primordial soup, that evolution itself has nothing to do with that. So if that's your defini definition of evolution, then uh, this video is probably not for you, um, because I guess you would believe that then God created all these different kinds of animals and they evolve. Perhaps, uh, you know, God created uh, some kind of prototype human and it evolved into a uh, modern man. I mean, if that's what you, you know, that's what you believe, then, um, then origins, right, has nothing to do uh, with abiogenesis because you're assuming that God just created these things uh, instantaneously at a much more um, sophisticated level than some kind of primordial soup uh, random events. So uh, for those who um, believe that a life came from um, a chain of random events, um, this is the um, chain of random events that I want to uh, address, this idea. Now, you often probably heard of the monkeys and the typewriter. And the monkeys are, uh, you have, I don't know, an infinite amount of monkeys and they're, and they're typing away. And somewhere in that set of uh, documents, uh, you'll find um, some kind of a Shakespeare uh, poem or something to that effect. Um, my question is, okay, if we're going to look, take that monkey example, what do the letters represent in that example? Because obviously they, uh, you wouldn't be giving an example if it didn't correlate to something in nature. So do the, do the letters the monkeys are type, typing uh, represent atoms? Do they represent molecules? Do they represent um, enzymes? Okay, so they, you know, first of all, you got to get that answered. But it's not really that important because we have other bigger problems. What does the paper represent? The paper represents the substrate that these, that these letters are um, um, being uh, put into, the environment. For instance, uh, if the paper is water, then you're not going to get very far because you're going to have these uh, um, hydrophobic um, uh, chains that uh, will not be um, constructible. They, they'll, they'll be breaking apart in a water substrate. That's just one of the many problems. You also have radiation problems. How are you going to get these letters to combine um, in, under radiation conditions? Um, but there's other, other problems. Um, oxygen. There's problems with oxygenation and so forth. Uh, a lot of the um, amino acids um, that are necessary for life uh, can't be constructed in uh, oxygen environments, and, and so you have all these different all these different environment problems. Um, so let's suppose that um, these monkeys are uh, typing randomly. You're going to have also the problem of the um, chirality of the of the um, enzymes. Are they left-handed or right-handed? You can't combine them both. The, the monkeys would be typing uh, an equal quantity of each, and um, they would de uh, destroy one another. You would have, um, 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 it would prevent life. They're toxic uh, uh, combination. So you have all these problems to begin with. Then you have, um, then you have the problem of uh, having the environments uh, change at the r in the right just the right order and at the right time sequence to uh, provide for this the construction of these uh, molecules and um, enzymes. So uh, you have pretty much you know mathematically insurmountable um, probabilities. Now you, there's two ways to win um, a lottery. Okay, one would be just you just so happen to pick the right um, 
ticket out of, let's say, one in a billion. Let's suppose that's what we're looking at, or maybe one in a hundred million. So you coincidentally got the right ticket. The other way to do it is to purchase all the tickets. Now, when arguing with uh, evolutionists, they seem to think that they're in a position to just purchase all the tickets at every event, so that um, what they would do is find the environment uh, that they needed and just and just um, cut and paste and put it into and put it into the um, order that they need these um, atoms and molecules to fit into. Basically, what you're asking is. Um, for the environment to construct uh, these um, very specific uh, chains of, of molecules or in a atoms from the atoms up to the molecules um, each different um, additional atom requires a new environment to uh, get it to um, uh, into place and it has to have to the environments have to come in that particular sequence. It's almost like saying, okay, well, you, you have a, um, a, an oxygen atmosphere, then you have a methane atmosphere, and then after that you have low heat, then you have high heat, then you have water, and you don't have dry, you have clay. Um, and you want all these things, to, but they have to take place very rapidly to get this um, um, chain uh, constructed uh, before it deteriorates. And, and if any of these environments take place uh, out of the, the appropriate order, you're going to destroy uh, the, the molecule you're trying to build, or the enzyme you're trying to build, um, either way, you're going to destroy it. You would, it would be like having uh, um, it, global <laughs> environmental changes taking place maybe uh, um, 10 per second, where uh, the Earth is um, 100 degrees and then the Earth is 0 degrees, and the Earth is 100 degrees and the Earth is 0 degrees, something to that effect, at, and, and in the right order. It would be, and you have the other aspects of the environment that have to change uh, um, simultaneously. So you have um, uh, basically us to believe that the uh, environment is changing just in the specific order to construct this, these um, molecules. Um, Behe, uh, in his book, um, Darwin's Black Box, uh, Irreduci Irreducible Complexity, uh, points to a similar situation where the evolutionists have um, to cross a barrier and um, they have a hundred opossum and they got to go across an eight lane highway and uh, after the first experiment you got one opossum that made it across well they got another eight lane highway to cross now and they just pull another hundred opossum out of the air well you don't have them you only have one you only got one left this is the situation I'm describing is, is actually much more severe than that. You need um, major environment, you need major environment changes rapidly, um, perhaps, um, you know, several per second. <laughs> you know, it's just not, it's just not um, intellectually um, possible. Uh, it's not intellectually honest to um, al allow these, you know, it may have been, or perhaps this happened, and this could have, it could have been this way, it may have been that way. See, that's not intellectual honesty. And so the question that I believe uh, needs to be asked here, this is the, this is the question that um, will forever science evolution is, is, why am I or anybody else expected to be intellectually dishonest to preserve this theory? That's the question. Why are we expected to be intellectually dishonest? Because that's what's required. It's, it's obvious that um, the conditions that uh, would be um, necessary to build these chains um, randomly um, are not available in um, reality. <laughs> you know, that's all there is to it. You know, you know uh, um, the Earth doesn't make those kinds of environmental changes rapidly within seconds and in a very specific order like that. That's the only way to, to construct this thing. Uh, it's a fairy tale, so I think that um, you know w um, people like myself uh, should not be expected to just uh, turn off our brains and, and accept this uh, theory. <laughs>